please at this time um, go to your IMATH calendar. You'll notice that on Wednesday there are two assignments, an exam mod 5 review and an exam mod 5 review bonus. The bonus is just that. It is bonus. It is optional. It is up to you. It is due by Wednesday at midnight. Right now we are going to focus on the exam mod 5 review. So if you could please I would suggest maybe doing like I have right now, open up the review and um, uh, maybe split screen so that you have scrap paper as you go through this process. So let's take a look at question number one. Question number one says to solve the uh, following equation for x by using the quadratic formula. If there's more than one solution, enter your solutions as a comma separated list like one comma three. So I am going to write my uh, function over here to the side and I am going to complete the quadratic formula. So remember, uh, if you have a function of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, make sure it's equal to zero, I can always solve it by using the quadratic formula, which is the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus four times a times c, all over two a. Now, my a value is 5, my v value is 9, my c value is 2. Let's stick those values into our formula. Just a second. My, my pen is not quite responding. There we go. So, when we do that, we have negative uh, 9 plus or minus. Now what I like to do is I like to actually physically square that 9 squared. 9 squared is 81. Uh, and then I like to physically do negative 4 times my a and times my c. So negative 4 times 5 is negative 20 times 2 is negative 40. I'm going to subtract 40. And then I like to physically do two a's. a is 5, two of those are 10. So we get negative 9 uh, plus the square root of 41 over 10. That's the plus version. We also get negative 9 minus the square root of 41 all over 10. Now, so that IMATH is not going to argue with me, I am going to put parentheses around those as I enter them. Okay. So here, that would be um, negative 9. Just a second here. Let's get me all organized here. Uh, preview what you got. You can see the preview there. We got a nice number. And then we're going to type it in again with a minus between it. So you'll notice um, if you preview it that we have both a positive negative version. They all look good. IMATH is happy with what we had done. So there is how we use the quadratic formula. Okay. So now let's go on to question number two. Question number two says to solve. Okay, so we've got this function. So again, let me write it a little bigger. So the first one says, solve where x minus 3 times x plus 6 equals 0. You might recall that's just the zeros. Where does x minus 3 equal 0? Which would be positive 3. Where does x plus 6 equal 0? 
that would be negative 6. So put those answers in with a comma between them. Those are the roots. So that would be the same answer in both spots. Now, the next thing says, what x value produces a maximum value? Well, if we have a quadratic like this is, with roots 3 and negative 6, the x value that produces uh, the uh, minimum or maximum, um, in this case it would be a minimum, but anyway, the one that produces a maximum or minimum value of the function would have to be smack dab in the middle of positive 3 and negative 6. Now positive 3 and negative 6 are, it's 4 between them. No, it is not. I'm sorry. It is uh, 9 between them. Um, so uh, we do have an issue, um, but if we average those two, um, the average value, so if you do 3 plus negative 6 divided by 2, the halfway point would be negative 1.5. Now, I would check your halfway point, make sure that it's right. If it turns green, then I would proceed to the next step. Once you know where the x value is, where a maximum or minimum occurs, just plug it in. So for me, I'm going to plug in negative 1.5 into my function. So I get negative 4.5 times um, 4.5. So it is, in this case, negative 20.25, if I did my math in my head right. So, yeah, okay. So uh, that is question number two. Now let's go to question number three. Same exact thing, but they have not factored it. Okay, so part A um, says to solve where it's equal to zero. If it is not a factorable quantity, which it is not, we have to then recognize that that's just saying, hey, use the quadratic formula. So it would be uh, negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c is negative 24 all over 2 a's which is 6 so I just apply the formula so it's negative 15 plus or minus the square root of 201 over 6 now I'm going to do like I did before I am going to separate them with a plus or, or the plus or minus versions with a comma. So I'm going to start with the plus one wrong. I notice in the preview that both of my fractions, and oh, I'm sorry, it's 201. Uh, both of my fractions, looking at that preview helps you find if you've typed something wrong. Um, uh, see, it, just, everything looks the way that I expect. Now I am going to hit submit before I move on to the next question because the roots are going to be the same. So if I select all that, if I can get it to work, well, maybe I almost did. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, well, I'm going to do it a different way. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste that, which you guys could probably do much better than I am. And it should be exactly the same. Now, to me, this is one where finding the halfway point um, uh, it's going to be a little bit weird because I've got those square roots to deal with. So then I am going to use the formula for my h, which is negative b over 2a. 
or we can recognize it, it is actually, and I should have done it the last time, it's at this point right here. That's your negative b over 2a. So it should be negative 15 over 6. Now those are both divisible by 3. You can put negative 5 over 2. It doesn't mention the word uh, simplification. You can put negative 5 over 2 or negative 2.5. Both of those work just fine. It's up to you. Now that you have found that, it's always a matter of take that value and plug it in. Now, if you don't have a calculator handy, I'm going to see if this works. I think this works. If you plug in negative 2.5, the math that happens, it would be 3 times negative 2.5 squared. plus 15 times negative 2.5. So I have just physically inputted negative 2.5 into my function. So that is an option. You can let IMAP do a little bit of the work for you. So there's question number three. Let's move on to question number four. It says a rock is thrown upward from a bridge onto a river below. The function is given by that quadratic. It determines the height of the rock above the surface of the water uh, in terms of the number of seconds t since the rock was thrown. What is the bridge's height above the water? Um, so that is just uh, at time zero, where are you standing? Well, where was it thrown? So if you plug in zero, you get that 138. That's going to be that constant value, uh, that plus 138. The next thing it says is after how many seconds does the rock hit the water? So that is saying where is the height equation? Negative 16t squared plus 41t plus 138 equal 0. Well, we know how to solve that one. It's either a factorable thing or it's the quadratic formula. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. I'm going to, so what I was doing was uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a's. I just wrote a down. I didn't write 2a's. And as you can see, that could muck everything up. Uh, in part b, I used 32. But in part c uh, and d, I forgot the 32. Or You know, I, you saw I forgot the 32. So that is a quadratic formula question. To find the formula for the parabola that has a horizontal uh, root at negative 2 and negative 3 and passes through the point 0, negative 4. So what we want to do there is we want to write down this formula. Where m and n are our roots, and we have to find our a. So let's start out doing that this is x plus 2 and x plus 3. Make sure you change those signs. Now our point is 0, negative 4. If it says passes through the point, that's where we're going to use the point. So um, the y value is negative 4, and all of my x's would become 0. So this would be 0 plus 2. This would be 0 plus 3. Or this would be negative 4 equals 6a. So a has to be negative 4 divided by 6, or negative 2 thirds. So now we have our equation. Our equation would be negative 2 thirds is our a or our front coefficient that needs to be next to an x plus 2 and an x plus 3. Now preview it. Make sure the negative 2 thirds is sitting in front. If it is, we're good to go. Now let's move on to number 6. Number six says primo pizza um, is, uh, so I'm going to make myself a little note. Primo pizza is, uh, profit is P of X. Supreme pizza's profit is S of X. Okay. So if primo's pizza profit is 2.1 times larger as uh, Supreme's, then P of X is 2.1 times s of x. So then if we re reverse that process, if we reverse that process, then that means that s of x would be p 
p of x divided by 2.1. And uh, I'm going to put p of x in parentheses. The whole p of x is divided by 2.1. We could also say p of x times uh, 1 over 2.1 would also work. So you can see how those ones work. Okay. Now b says that primo pizza is 140 more than pizza supreme. So uh, that means we would have to take the supreme and add on 140. So think about going backwards. If we wanted that s of x by itself, uh, p of x, we would have to subtract 140. So let's check that little section. OK. And then it says, Primo's pizzas on a given day is always the same as the profit of, of Pizza Supreme's profit two days later. So two days later would be, if you were graphing days, two to the right. So uh, Primo's pizza is Supreme's pizza two days to the right. So I was assume, and now we're going to check it that it would be oh, days at x is minus 2. Let's check that one before we move on to the next one. OK. Oh, OK. So uh, it says the profit of Primo, Primo Pizza um, is if we want primo pizza in term of, of uh, s, s would be 2 to the right, p would be 2 to the left. So the s function has to move it where we want it. We have to move it back to the left. And then the opposite would hold true here. We would have to move that 2 to the right to make the match up. So that one is the hardest one to kind of contemplate, okay? So if Primo's pizza on a given day is always the same as the pizza profit two days later. So um, they match up the X would, this P of X would be two to the left of S of X, if that helps you understand that a little bit, okay. Uh, question seven. So we have these functions. Um, we want to take the f of x function for part a. See how it says use, uh, g, write the g in using f. So we're going to take the blue function and how could we make it be the g function? Well we would just multiply the, uh, the f function by negative 1 and then this one would be the same. Uh, if we wanted to take the g function and turn it into the f function we would have to multiply it by negative 1. I think that's all they wanted there. They're just showing you that it is a flip. You can either flip one down or the other. You'll get the same thing. Uh, now, you got to think about which one you're turning into. Okay, so A, if we want to take the blue function and turn it into the G function, we want to take the blue function and turn it into the g function. That blue function has to move 1, 2, 3 to the right, and 1 down. To take a function and move it 3 to the right, we're going to have a minus 3 on the inside. And to move it 1 down, we're going to go 1 down. Okay, So we'll check that. Now, the opposite way, let's think about if we slid the red function g and turned it into f. How could we get g to turn into f? Well, this time we have to move it up 1 and to the left 3. So to move our g function to the left 3, we have to add 3. And then or, so it would be x plus 3. And then we have to um, move it up 1, so that would be a plus 1. So kind of visualize for part A, how can I shift the F function to become the red one, the G function, and B, you're going the opposite direction. How can I shift the red function to be the blue function? 
Here's question number nine. It says the graph the following is given match the following functions with the functions below. So we've got this f of x function. Now let's first look at what happened to a. a, the function, um, if you take a look, uh, what you can think about the fact is the direction of the n's hasn't changed, so we have it multiplied by a negative one. Um, uh, the only function that has a direction change is d. So this first one has a negative in front. That's the only one that's been flipped upside down. Okay, so we know that that one's d. Now, uh, a has just, think about if you picked up that function and you move that negative three point over to negative one, it's jumped two to the right. So that would be this one here. That's a. B. That same function still goes through the origin, and now the big bump is down, is on the left, and the little bump is on the right. So it flipped over the y-axis. We do that by multiplying by a negative on the inside, so that one's b. Now that does leave this one to be um, this option c. We should have seen the function uh, moved uh, down to, you'll see, I, I kind of look at the origin, that zero, zero point is now gone down to units. So that is a little bit about how we look at uh, question number nine. I'll submit it just to make sure that. So there's question nine. Like, let's look at question number 10. Again, this is very much like one we saw a second ago. In part A, let's take our f function and make it become the g function. Well, the first thing I would think about is how could we flip it downward? Well, we would flip it downward by multiplying the f function out in front by negative 1. So that would be negative f of x. But if I want to move that origin point to the right 3, make sure I have a plus three on the inside. Now, we need to go the opposite direction if we want to do part B. This time we're taking the red function and we're turning it into the blue function. We still need a negative on the outside of G to flip it over our X axis. We need to move it to the right three units. So that would be an X minus three on the inside. So that is question number 10. Last one I want to do is question number 11. It says that we have the graph of j. Uh, g of x is j of the quantity of x minus 3. What happened and how, how could we find the graph? Well, all you got to do is take the point that you see and let's take that point and let's move it to the right three. So instead of being at the point four, negative one, it should now be at the point seven, negative one. A is not correct. Uh, the second version is correct for me. So that's the one I want. It hasn't moved up or down any. It has moved just to the right three. Let's do one more. Okay, so we've got this uh, j of x function shown, the originals in the first box. Uh, we want to find which function would be g if it's j of x plus 2. Now x plus 2 is equal to 0 at negative 2. That tells us to take that vertex point and shove it to, to the left. Don't change it up and down at all. It should, should still hit the negative 3 height but let's move it to the left too. So the one that has done that, I believe is this one. It's still at that uh, height of negative three, but I've just pushed it to the left. So we will continue this uh, tomorrow. For now, uh, go look and see if you're missing any Mod 5 stuff. Uh, there is a Mod 5 review bonus in IMAC. You can work on that.